Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about partition function of quicksort. We'll first talk about partition function. We will understand it well so that we can quickly understand quicksort. So we are given an array, an unsorted array, obviously, and we are given index of an element inside this array. So I'm given this index P as five, which is index of the last element seven. So the requirement of the partition function is it should partition the array around seven. All the elements before seven should come before it. All the elements greater than seven should come after seven. If there are elements which are equal to seven, they should also come before seven. That's the requirement. There can be multiple possible outputs of the partition function. You can have three, six, seven, eight, twelve, ten. Here, all the elements here are smaller than seven. All the elements are greater than seven. But there can be multiple permutations of these elements and these elements. For example, this is a permutation. This is another permutation. So you can have multiple possible outputs, and any of those outputs is valid. So your partition algorithm can either change this array to this or this or any other array where seven. is at its correct place and all the elements before 7 are smaller and all the elements after it are greater than 7 please pause this video and try to think of a solution that partitions the array around a given element you may think of different solutions we'll talk about three solutions of this problem one is naive solution then there is an algorithm called lomuto partition then there is another algorithm called hoover's partition we'll talk about these three algorithms one by one let us now talk about naive solution to partition the array around a given pivot let's take a look at this example we are given this array where low points to this element low is zero and high points to the last element and we are also given the partition point as last element So indexes are from zero to six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So P and H both are six. Both are last elements. So you L and H represent the whole array, and this element represents the element around which you want to partition. So what do you want as an output? You want to put all the elements which are smaller than or equal to eight on the left side, and all the greater elements on the right side. So your output should be five, six, eight. And then nine, twelve, eleven, and thirteen. These elements can come in any order. These elements can come in any order, but they should come before it, and they should go after it. Let's see how does this work. How does this partition function, naive function, work that we have written here? So, what does this function do? It creates an array of size temp which can hold all the input elements. How many input elements are there? L is zero, H is six, so you will have six minus zero plus one, seven elements. So you create an array of size seven. First, you copy all the smaller or equal to elements into this temp array. So after this step, what will happen? Your temp array will contain five, six, and eight. We traverse through the input array for every element. We compare it with the Pivot element or the element around which we want to partition. If it is small or equal to, we put it in the temporary array and we increment the index. Right. So we have five, six, eight after this step. Now in this step, we put all the greater elements. So we have thirteen, nine, twelve, eleven, nine, twelve, eleven, and you can see that our temporary array has the Partitioned array. It has all the elements which are smaller than or equal to eight on the left, all the greater elements on the right. So what all we need to do now is copy this temporary array back to our original array. So we copy these elements back to our original array, and our original array becomes a copy of temp, which is five, six, eight, thirteen, nine, twelve, eleven. So this is a naive way of partitioning. It requires three traverses and also requires big O of n extra space. So auxiliary space requirement by this is 
big O of n and time is big O of n. But it is like doing three traversals of our input array. So can you do this, solve this problem with big O of one extra space? We'll talk about that solution, Lamuito partition solution in the next video.